Today we're comparing the Google and new Meta Data Analyst Certificates. Until recently, Google was by far the most popular option. But now, with Meta's new program, this might be about to change. And we're already seeing a lot of people enroll in this course instead. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth into these courses, as I've already made a detailed video for each one. And the focus here in this video is going to be on comparing them against each other. Let's start by taking a quick look at both of these certificates. And if you do take the wrong course, you'll waste a lot of time, which you don't want. So let's just fix this right away. The Google one is beginner level and it's six months at 10 hours a week and over 2 million people are enrolled in this one and it's a lot of people. Now, of course, everyone did not complete it, but it's still a lot of people. And the goal here is to prepare you for an entry level job as a data analyst. If we look at the courses, you'll see that it kind of follows the data analytics lifecycle. And in the first few courses, you'll learn the basics and how to think like a data analyst. You then move over to preparing, processing and analyzing data. And finally, you learn about data visualizations as well as some R programming. Now, the Meta Certificate is similar in many ways. It is also beginner level, although it's five months at 10 hours a week instead of six months like the Google one. It's very new, so at the moment of this recording, less than 10,000 people are enrolled. This can actually be a good thing as well because it makes your certificate more unique, but then we'll talk more about this later. Now, the goal here is to help you launch a career in data analytics starting from zero as well. And in this one, the key skills you'll gain are SQL, Pandas, data analysis, and Python programming. But if we take a look at the courses, you'll see that instead of eight courses, there are only five courses in the program. There's an introduction to data analytics, and there's a course about spreadsheets and SQL. The third course is about working with Python, and course number four is about statistics. They will give you kind of an introduction to statistics, which is really helpful because data analysis heavily relies on it. And finally, course five has not been released yet, but it's kind of an introduction to data management. All right, let's move on to some of the differences. And I will divide this up into three separate categories. And the first one is going to be the general differences. The second one, the curriculum itself. And finally, the skills you'll learn because there are some differences in these courses that you should be aware of before you start. Now, both of these programs are from very credible institutions. I mean, it's Meta and Google, and they both have their own course programs. They've launched a lot of courses in the past. And of course, Google has the advantage that it's been around longer for the data analytics course. But on the other hand, I would also say that Meta makes your certificate more unique as it's still very new and there are very few people that have this one. Now, when it comes to the time to completion, they both claim to be around five or six months at 10 hours a week. So it's very similar. But I did find something very suspicious, and if you do take a look at the curriculum, that's when I found an issue. Now, I actually added up the time for each course in the Google certificate, and I got 192 hours in total. That kind of makes sense. It's what you would expect, right? Now, I will say that most people tend to complete it way faster and cut this time in half, but it's still very interesting. Because when you go further and you look at the meta certificate, and you take all the courses and you add them up together, it's way less. The final course has not been released yet, so I just assume that it's 22 hours, which is pretty similar to other courses. But here, the total length is only 106 hours. And this means that the Google certificate is 86 hours longer, and it's practically near double the time. But as a disclaimer, since Meta's course is not fully released, I don't know if there are going to be more courses or if the last one is going to be like 60 hours or something. We'll have to see and we'll have to find out. There does seem to be some content missing and I don't know if it's intentional because they want to cut down the curriculum and just focus on being more concise or if they are going to add more courses like the Google one where they have like eight courses instead of five or something. I did also find one thing that's missing from the Meta course and that is the capstone project. At the moment, there is no such project available for the Meta course and a capstone project, it's kind of a final project that you can do, which you then put in your portfolio after. And if they do release a capstone project, I would say that this course instantly becomes a few points better because that would really help. Google has a capstone project and some modules on job preparation. So in that aspect, I would say that Google definitely wins when it comes to preparing you for jobs, focusing on projects and actually building a resume and a portfolio for you. There's also the different skills. And this one is very, very important because you can spend so much time learning, but if you don't learn the right skills, then it really isn't going to help you as much. And here we actually have that each course focuses on very specific skills. And there is a big difference between Meta and Google. Meta has a course on spreadsheets and a course on SQL, as well as a course on Python, where you'll work with some common libraries like Pandas. 
You might also work with SQL in the final course, I don't know because it's not been released yet. Google also has a course on SQL, which is very good, but they do also focus on R instead of Python. Google generally isn't known to be the most technical course, it does more focus on, you know, the mindset and actually operating like a data analyst, thinking analytically and being able to solve problems. And they're teaching you a lot of stuff, but it's not a lot of hands-on work, to be honest. And this brings me to my final conclusion. And I wouldn't say that it really replaces the Google certificate, it's a lengthier course at a slower pace, and there is no Python. But on the other hand, this meta course is shorter, it covers some more statistics, as well as Python instead of R. And if you're a beginner looking to just get started fast, both options are very good, it just depends on your goals, and Meta has purposely made it similar to Google, just in their own way. I would say that a good way to make use of these courses is to take Google first or something else, and then continue with the Meta course. It's going to give you the full, slow Google experience, as well as more practice with SQL, a deeper understanding of statistics, and also an introduction to Python as well. So it's going to teach you a lot of different things. If I had the time and I wanted to take both courses, that's the way I would go about it. The Capstone project is also worth considering, and if you do take the Meta course exclusively, I would highly recommend doing some projects on the side, which you can start doing from sites like Kaggle or just a quick Google search. This will help you build your portfolio and keep progressing after you take the course, because for most, the goal is not just to take a course and finish it, but to learn, apply the skill and finally become job ready. I'm going to leave a link to the meta course in the description, and I do highly recommend that you try it out yourself. All teachers and courses have a different style, so you have to find what works for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll leave a link in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.